Welcome to part three of our video sequence in which we are um, analyzing the forces on this excavator uh, boom and arm. In parts one and two, we had gotten to the point where we knew these forces. Uh, we know the reaction force exerted at this point. Uh, we know at this point here, we know the tension, actually it's compression in this member. We know the tension in this point, member. So we're now ready to do a free body diagram of the arm. And from doing that free body diagram of the arm, we'll get this tension and this reaction force. So um, we'll go to that free body diagram. I have to warn you that my sketch of the arm is about as bad as this red outline that you see here. So when you see it, remember we're not doing the free body diagram of a whale or a porpoise or something like that. It's the free body diagram of this arm. Okay, so here it is, the free body diagram of the arm. And let's identify the forces that are um, involved here. We will have a force on B, and this will be minus the force that we just computed uh, for or the force actually that we computed for the linkage. And again, the reason for that is that um, this is a reaction force and the other piece that's connected here is that linkage. And so the force that uh, the linkage exerts on the arm is opposite to the force that the arm exerts on the linkage. So that's why we would call this minus FB. We also have this uh, tension CD, which we've computed. We have this tension CG, which we've computed. We have the weight of the arm, which again, we're assuming is 12,000 pounds. We have the reaction force at F, and we know nothing about this, so I'll just draw it as an unknown vector and call it F sub F. And we have the tension in this hydraulic cylinder that's connected to H, and I'll call this THI. Uh, we don't know this tension, uh, but we do know the direction here. At least we can figure that out. Okay, so um, we have three unknowns in the sense that we have one unknown tension and the X and Y components of F sub F. We'll have three equations, uh, one moment equation, and then an x component and a y component of the force equations. And so uh, we need to uh, do a lot of computation now to first off get the sum of the moments equal to zero. And again, if I do the sum of the moments around this point f, then um, it gets rid of all the unknowns except thi because the only unknowns are THI and this F sub F. So I'll do this. I'll take the sum of the moments around point F, and that has to be set to zero. Okay. Now, again, rather than doing the computations, which are fairly extreme here, I will um, basically, uh, rather than showing the computations, I'll pause recording write down everything, and um, we'll go from there. Uh, the one thing that you need to um, understand, uh, we'll be finding relative position vectors for the moments, as well as the direction vector for uh, this uh, THI. So, they should magically appear in a minute. Okay, here they are. Um, so we have the relative position vectors between the point F, where we, where we are computing, about which we are computing our moment, and all the other points that we have forces uh, going through, as well as the direction vector for uh, lambda HI. So the vector THI will be the magnitude times lambda hat HI. Okay, so the next thing we want to do then is we want to actually find, uh, all, compute all of these moments about F. 
So again, without um, going through a lot of details, this is the way it will look, at least without going through a lot of computation. Okay, so we'll have R, B, F cross minus F, B. That gives us the moment uh, due to F, B plus R, D, F cross T, C, D. This is minus T, C, D lambda hat CD. Okay, so this basically gives us uh, the tension force, which again is a compression force, but it, it gives us the tension force in this direction, and that's why the negative sign here is because we actually computed the tension force in this direction. And similarly, uh, for this tension force up here, we have R G F cross minus T C G lambda hat C G plus R E F cross um, let me call this weight F sub E this guy here plus R H F cross, and this force here is T H I times lambda hat T H I. Whoops, I'm making, making up notation here. It should be lambda hat H I. And this whole thing is equal to zero. Okay, the only thing that is unknown is THI. So I can do all the computations. Uh, I'll get um, numbers times uh, k hat. Uh, I set uh, everything equal to zero, and I solve then for THI to discover that THI is equal to 111,000. 405 pounds. Okay, so by using the moment equation, I've got this. Okay, so the next thing to do is to sum the forces and set them equal to zero. So the sum of the forces we have um, minus FB minus TCD lambda hat minus TCG lambda hat CG and this should be CD plus F sub E plus THI which we now know lambda hat HI and this is um, oh plus I almost forgot the force we need to solve for, F sub F, and this is all set to zero. And when we solve this, again, I will uh, not go through any of the details, but we get then that F sub F is minus 94,117 pounds I hat plus 101,607 pounds J hat. Okay, so basically we now have the unknown reaction force at F and we've got the unknown tension at H. So if we go back to our picture, uh, you can see that I've drawn these forces in. Again, this is about the um, uh, the relative lengths of the vectors are close to proportional to the magnitudes of the forces. And you can see now that this reaction force here is getting rather large, as well as the tension 
due to this hydraulic cylinder. And if you look at the magnitudes of uh, these forces relative to the weight of the arm, you can actually see that the arm itself is not going to dramatically affect this analysis or the weight of the arm itself. Okay, so that completes the analysis of the arm. I don't think I've got enough time to do the analysis of the boom, so we'll have one more video in which we do the analysis of the boom. Stay tuned.